What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We're here to uh, discuss the new movie, the uh, Bob Lazar Area 51 and Flying Saucers that uh, recently dropped. Uh, this is kind of near and dear to my heart because I love conspiracy theories. And uh, as a human being, I have an inquisitive nature and always conceptualize and wonder what's underlying. I think that's just part of human nature to figure out what's underneath, what's going on, what is the expansive uh, nature of the universe. I think that's just a, a general um, questioning nature that human beings have, you know, whether we seek it through conspiracy, religion, um, just living. Uh, you, you're, you're trying to establish truth. And if you're not trying to establish truth, and, and uh, then, you know, then kudos to you. You've reached the uh, stratosphere that I have not found myself to be locked down and sound in. You know, so at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. OK, so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You got to take care of your business, love people, treat people with respect and keep positivity and try to progress this energy that we are emitting on a positive level. But let's discuss this video. I'm not here to, to rant, but I probably will. So buckle in uh, the movie. If you're looking into this movie, this is also a little bit of a kind of a review. But if you're looking into the movie and you think you're going to have some substantial Leaning point to what your decision making is is about him as a authentic whistleblower or any kind of identifying hardcore evidence. You will not find it in this movie. So if if you have the precipice in your mind that oh this is going to be a revelation, it's not. It does, however, bring credentials to this man. It does show that you know he has continued on in his life. It's, he's not, you know, doing alien circuits or, you know, doing all this other stuff. He's, he's, he is working in the scientific field. Uh, the one prepared, 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 well, you make that word up. The most uh, important piece of evidence that this does show is that they're talking about this element 115 and uh, the next day he gets raided by the FBI. Okay, that there's a lot of the thing about things that are odd occurrences, usually some kind of something that surrounds it. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Now, do things happen in the world that don't necessarily make sense? Sure. That was my best Red Dead Redemption 2 from Arthur Shaw. Sure. sure. But anyway. <laughs> Sorry, man. I had to do it. Uh, but uh, most of the time, when there is an air of suspicion, uh, there is something going on. And people need to understand that covert things, things taking place in, in the world that seemingly have a bizarre occurrence or situation or circumstance to it can in fact be set in motion on purpose by an external force. These things have been going on for ages. These are things that, you know, you don't know who did it, but somebody set in motion an occurrence for something to take place. Okay? This is... You do it in your everyday life, whether it's you clock in on time so you don't get on fired. You do certain things to have a certain outcome. People that have negative. What do you want to call it? Energy about them or that don't care so much about human life or they have their own regards in their own means and their own agendas. They do things that aren't so pleasant. I mean, you see it in the movies all the time. Oh, they have a police scene. Here's 50 bucks. Give a fake uh, testimony. You know, uh, here, let's get this crackhead, to, you know, kill this guy. And we'll just play it off as a crackhead murder. But there's somebody, there's a, there's a, it's like that's what hitmen are all about, right? 
It's somebody doing something nasty so they don't have any kind of evidence or kind of investigation coming towards them. Okay? Thus being said, if it's something kind of weird, it, 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 you have to investigate it. Weird occurrences, especially repeated ones, have some kind of detail. And I just went on a big rant, dude. And I said I wasn't going to. But you know what? I did it. I did it. But this is this is how, you know, my bias on conspiracies and and aliens and stuff. Let's just get into the alien stuff. There's really no admission to the alien thing. And here's my big soapbox and here's my problem. Okay? Throughout this whole thing, he they said that he's been shown uh paperwork and, and all of this stuff and he's seen these nine crafts. Here is the big question. You got through six minutes of this video, and here's the big question in my refute to Bob Lazar, anybody who is associated with this video, um, Tom DeLong, anybody that can answer this question, okay? This is it. This is what harbors in my heart to want to know, okay? How did we obtain nine UFOs? Nine of them. Okay, some of them were not intact, some of them were. I find it very, very difficult <clears throat> to understand. So if some of them were damaged, okay, the, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Some of them were damaged and some of them are pristine, right? Some of them are fully functional and operational. So how do we have damaged ones and how do we have one? Some would, there, there's only a couple of scenarios. We shot some down, uh, but how do we capture the ones that... Uh, are pristine. Do we do a trade-off? Oh, we have some of your personnel. We photographed and everything. We'll give you the bodies and the personnel so we don't desecrate them. You got to give us some ships. I don't think that um, negotiating on that kind of level with a highly intellectual force with that type of technology goes over too well. Okay. So there, 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 there's that one scenario that could happen how we would have a pristine ship. Okay. Here's the other one. Um, we have, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. These are the only things that I can come up with. Do you have any suggestions or theories? I'd love to hear it in the thing. Um, that one of them crashed. And at this point, that was when the mediation started to take place because we had become aware, solidified uh, uh, accounts of their presence. So that's when the... Uh, disclosure on a military or private sector, not private, yeah, private sector, where, however, however you wanted to word it, uh, on, on a, on a um, small level took place, okay? So then there was that exchange and then there was a mingling there. But here's the problem with that. All of these scenarios have problems because you have disclosure on a very small level and at this point, if, if this is all real and people are nipping at the bit for this knowledge, I mean, you have, I mean, look, they made a movie. They didn't just make a movie because they just had a couple bucks to throw at some camera. Okay. There's people that really want to know. They know that they, they're going to make some kind of income from revenue on this, that people are going to watch this. So you don't, I mean, I make videos because I just do it for myself, but I just don't. A whole lot of people got involved in this video to put this out because certain people want to know. There's a following for it. Of all the materials, all the TV shows that you have, I mean, you have a lot of supernatural shows out there. You have a lot of paranormal and alien shows out there. Take a look at the X-Files. I mean, there is a following on this stuff. Why wouldn't this be brought? Um, hmm. That's the big question. But uh, those, those are the problems that I have with the nine UFOs. Okay. And uh, maybe we are uh, reverse engineering it and we just don't have it down. But he said that we have them up and they were able to fly. And with all the TB3, maybe we have perfected that technology. I don't know. But it seems to me that disclosure has got to take place. I mean, I could maybe possibly see it as a military advantage to keep it secret. 
But at the same time, I mean, it's kind of like... But I do know one thing. I did not come out any further ahead with this video. And I would like to know what the documents that he viewed were all about. I want to know what the documents described as how we got these nine craft or what was done with these alien bodies. And here's the really big one. I mean, maybe I am dumb. Maybe maybe this has to be a matter of national or global secrecy. I don't know. But it would seem to me that whether it be on a peaceful front or even on a military front, the more people that knew about it, the more minds you have working. It's, the, it's right here, the Sun Tzu Art of War, which I refer to quite a bit. The more you have people you have working on a matter, the better it can be. Now, I know you can't have, have say there's too many chiefs or too many Indians, not enough chief, whatever that, or vice versa, or you have too, ham, too many hands in the pot. Yeah, but you know what? If this does have an impact on individuals, then we have what they call a right to know. Which we all know that we don't really have too many rights to know anything. But, you know, that's just my take on this rant-esque review, the R&R. &R. Um, but the movie was, was uh, really kind of shot low. I mean, it's got, you know, Mickey Rourke doing the um, the narration, which... Number one, I don't really see Mickey Rourke as a narrator. I see him as a wonderfully talented actor, but he does not have the voice. I mean, he just sounded like, uh, I don't know, even some of the things that he, when he, where he was talking, it sounded like really kind of difficult and, and dif difficult to follow and his monotonism. Um, but I, I respect Mickey Rourke and I love a lot of the movies that he's in, but I just don't think that that was his niche. I just don't think that that was his niche. But, um, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and condemn the movie for people that are enthusiasts. But, I will say that uh, if you're looking for something that's going to lean you one way or the other, it's not going to. It will not. There's no mind-blowing uh, revelation with the Bob Lazar Area 51 and Flying Saucers. Um, so keep digging, man. That's all I can tell you. But uh, you know, love one another. Be good to one another. Spread some positivity. Maybe one day we'll, we'll find something out. I mean, you know. But it ain't today. Bye.